Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Wajaha and today we are going to talk about one of the most important protocols in the world of DeFi. Yes, it's Uniswap. Let's get straight to it. Uh, now, I thought today what we're going to do is talk about Uniswap version 3. I, I think it's something that a lot of people find a little bit complicated. And to be honest, it is. Uh, it's not the most simple thing to kind of grasp uh, initially. But today I'll try and explain a little bit about how it works. And of course, how you can set up a position on Uniswap v3 where you can make some lovely passive income by farming. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of Uniswap. Um, Uniswap is available on a variety of chains, Ethereum. Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, Polygon, even BNB and Cello as well, um, which we don't really use too often. Uh, but today I thought I'll just show you on Arbitrum kind of how to basically set up a Uniswap v3 position, how v3 even works in the first place, uh, and we'll talk about a few other things that you need to pay attention to as well. Now, uh, I think the first thing to basically understand is how Uniswap v3 even works. Now, Usually, uh, and especially with Uniswap version 2, you have your liquidity, which you provide for one asset and another. So in this case, you know, we've got wrapped ETH and USDT. So let's say you've got some ETH and you've got some USDT, you want to provide liquidity. Well, when you do so on Uniswap version 2 or any other kind of farming platform, you provide liquidity against all price ranges. So, you know, going from zero all the way to infinity, you provide liquidity across the entire range. Um, and, you know, that, of course, is great because you don't have to worry about prices or anything like that. You you know, whatever the price is, you're, you've got liquidity there that you're providing. Um, however, it does come with some caveats. Uh, and one of the main ones being is that it's really not capital efficient because why are you providing liquidity for Ethereum at the price of infinity or at the price of a million dollars or at the price of a hundred dollars? When Ethereum, well, Ether, I should say, is trading at a very kind of narrow range, you know, between, let's say, $1,500 and $2,000. Um, and so with Uniswap v3, one, one of the main things or points behind it is that it allows you to provide concentrated liquidity within a certain price range. Um, and by concentrating your liquidity, you're therefore able to earn a lot more in fees rather than you providing liquidity across the entire price range. Um, and essentially, that's the premise for Uniswap v3. Now, one of the main reasons why it's a little bit difficult to do is because that means that if the price of the particular asset that you're providing liquidity for changes or goes out of range, you are not going to make any more money because only when the price is within the range that you're providing liquidity for is when you're going to make fees uh, from kind of transactions that happen at that price range. Um, and so that's kind of one of the reasons why Uniswap v3 is a difficult thing to kind of do by yourself at times. Um, if you're on kind of Ethereum mainnet, it can be a little bit expensive because you're going to have to constantly pay gas fees to kind of rebalance. Uh, and that's why we've seen a lot of um, portfolio managers or Uniswap v3 managers or protocols that manage your positions come out um, with the likes of things like Arrakis Finance, for example, uh, Gamma uh, Gamma as well being another one. So there's, there are a few of these um, management strategy kind of protocols built on top of Uniswap v3, which do everything for you. But today I'm just going to show you exactly what you should do uh, in order to set up a Uniswap v3 position. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you know the, the Uniswap website. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But you need to head to the pool tab first. And you can see with this particular wallet, I already have a position open with OM USDC. Um, and you can see kind of the, 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 the price of OM per USDC and the maximum. So the minimum price and the maximum price. Essentially, that's the range that I've essentially uh, chosen for the liquidity that I've provided here. So you can see that there. Uh, and you can see you'll see a nice thing here saying in range. Um, so we are going to um, uh, do a new position uh, and we're going to basically pick two assets. Uh, I think today what we'll do is we'll pick some Arbitrum and we'll pick some USDC. Um, and uh, what you'll find here is you'll see the fee tier. So this is essentially the percentage you'll earn in fees for every kind of swap. Um, for stable pairs, it's recommended to go for low percentage because that's generally what you want to see. Uh, but for most pairs, I think you're going to go for the 0.3% or even 1% for kind of more uh, volatile assets. Um, so uh, for today's purpose, I'm going to pick 0.3%. 
Um, and then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to decide uh, kind of the minimum and maximum price of USDC per ARB token that we're going to provide liquidity for. So what is the range that we're providing liquidity for? Well, I think the first thing that you probably want to do is check what the price of ARB is. Uh, and I know that as of today, as of recording right now, one Arbitrum token is $1.13. Sets, um, and so you know, rather what you could do is you could just provide liquidity for the full range, so from zero to infinity. Um, but that's basically like a Uniswap V2 position. You know, we don't want to do that. We want to concentrate our liquidity because there's no point providing liquidity for ARB at 10 cents or 20 cents or $10 or $20 because there's nowhere near that price at the moment. We want to be a bit more capital efficient, and so what we're going to do is we're going to choose a price like a very narrow range actually. Um, so I'm going to go for zero point. Uh, 1.05 cents and um, we're going to go for 1.25 cents so that's what we're going to go for today so we've got uh, quite a narrow range in fact I probably could make this a little smaller and we're going to uh, basically put chuck in um, all of the uh, kind of USDC that I have in this wallet it's not much but you know it'll do uh, and you might see this in the farming uh, series that I've got on YouTube so go and check that out as well so we've got a bit of ARB here we've got some USDC so yeah I'm going to kind of provide this liquidity here now you might think why is this not balanced well it's because I have actually kind of made this range a little bit narrow so you can see that if I actually increase the price or decrease the price you know the more I decrease the price uh, the less ARB I need but the more I increase the price the more ARB I need as well uh, and similarly on the other side as well if I decrease the price here I need less ARB if I increase the price here I need more ARB um, but that obviously makes sense because uh, a full range you can have 50 50 so um, all you need to do here is you need to approve the tokens after and you just click preview and let's go back here you can click preview uh, and basically add and as soon as you click add your position is there so uh, one of the things that happens with uniswap is that at at the bottom price let's say if arb goes to this price well the usdc that i've provided will end up getting converted into arbitrum and at the maximum price the arbitrum that i have will be converted into usdc so essentially you could think of this as like uh, a constant kind of limit order that's constantly going um and i'm basically dollar cost averaging my way into arb if the price goes down and i'm dollar cost averaging my way into usdc as the price goes up so this is a really good way actually of dollar cost averaging into your positions um and and farming along the way as well now one thing that i haven't really talked about is how much do you make from this nowhere does it say kind of uh any information about how much passive income what percentage APY etc etc you're going to be making uh, and that's why I think these two these two applications DeFi Llama and Revert Finance are really really good first thing is DeFi Llama I mean you can just search uh, for any particular token and you know here I've just searched for ARB token on Uniswap v3 how much do we how much do we make here well you can see here that for DAI USDC uh, USDT and you know you, they've got the different um, percentages as well you can see the APYs that we can possibly earn here uh, as well as the TVL so you can see here that this is the one that I went for it's got 6 million in TVL currently earning a whopping 51% APY which is huge um, but you can see that if I pick die at the 0.05% uh, mark significantly less TVL significantly higher APY so these are all things that you might want to consider as well and the great thing is they've got a 30 day a average APY as well so you can see kind of how much has this changed over the last 30 days so you can see that this top pool is actually very very good earning 150 percent 160 percent um on ARB die uh, and you know the price of uh Arbitrum has been very stable over the last month so this has been fantastic really uh they're able to make a pretty good passive income here um, so yeah, use use a tool like DeFi Llama to really uh, get a good understanding of which pools and which percentages kind of work well, where the volume is, uh, and TVL of course as well. Um, but Revert Finance is much better, uh, and I think Re Revert Finance is basically created for Uniswap, uh, and, and it basically allows you to first of all select the network. So that's what we're going to do. The protocol being Uniswap v3, uh, we're going to choose ARB and USDC because that's what we talked about today um, and it's going to fetch you know a ton of data here that you're going to see in a second that is really 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 helpful first of all we need to see uh, which pool we're going to select so uh, obviously we picked this one and we can see exactly how much uh, TVL is in each of these you can see that uh, at the 0.05% fee range there is a fair amount of TVL but uh, most of it is at the 0.3% mark 
Uh, and then we're going to have a similar thing that we just saw before. So we can see the minimum ma and maximum prices. So what did I set my prices at? I set them at 0 0. Uh, 1.05 and uh, well, 1.06 and 1.25. So that's what we're going to select here. And you can see this is basically a chart, which is really, really handy. That basically tells us what the price of ARB was over the literally the last month. And we can see that with the range that we've picked, we've pretty much captured uh, the entire price range uh, you know, in this kind of narrowed, concentrated liquidity, you can see here the minimum and maximum. And this is kind of uh, where all the liquidity distribution is at the moment. You can see there's a lot of liquidity uh, uh, at this kind of price range that we've selected, but there is also liquidity at extreme ends of prices as well, which, you know, uh, I think if you're bullish on ARB and you think it could go there, then fair enough, you can do that. But I mean, if you just want to concentrate your liquidity in a small price range, um, then this is a fantastic way to do so. Um, so yeah, this is a really good way to just kind of visualize where we're actually providing liquidity. We're providing liquidity between this range and that range. You can see here, this is the current price. So we want to concentrate our liquidity in this area where we can, where we're able to get more fees. Um, and uh, a really nice thing here is that we can basically enter kind of how much we're, we're providing. So it's going to be about 600 USDC approximately that I'm providing. Uh, and we can run a back test here. Uh, and this is basically going to show us how much we would have been making over the last, you know, 30 days, for example. Um, so you can see here, 30 days, uh, well, the APR versus HODL is 137%. Uh, and, and that's fantastic because, you know, we're able to see and we can change this to, you know, 14 days if we wanted and kind of see over the last two weeks, only 120%, but over the last 24 hours, for example, 60%. So of course, there's always going to change based on kind of how much volume is going through that particular pool. But I think it's great that we're able to visualize all of this directly here. And, you know, I could do the same thing with DAI, for example, um, because DAI had quite, quite a fair amount of fees, didn't it? So let's have a look at that. And this is something that I haven't seen myself yet. So I'm pretty interested. So there's no, there's no pool for this uh, fee tier, but we do have the 0.3% um, pool. You can see there's not really much liquidity here at all, is there? Uh, so let's pick this one uh, because that one did pretty good. Um, and then let's select the minimum maximum price. So we're going to go for uh, something fairly similar. Um, let's go for, let's just enter this manually, 0 0.5. And we're going to go for 2.5. And so yeah, there you go. That's basically our price range. Um, and let's say if we add in about $600 of dye, let's run a back test and see kind of what we would possibly be earning. Uh, and you can basically play around with this and kind of see what works for you. Um, there, there are obviously the risk of the, the price range going uh, or the price of those assets going outside of the range that you've provided. But then the great thing about being on Arbitrum is that gas fees are very cheap. And so you can readjust and rebalance it yourself however you wish. Um, so because of the, because of, uh, the uh, low liquidity, we can see that actually um, over the last 30 days, for example, the, the price of these assets weren't actually in range. Um, and so that's why I think looking at kind of how much TVL is here is really important as well. Um, let's see if this changes if we were to select this instead. Um, so let's go with the same thing. Oh, so you can see here, look, uh, with DAI, it would have only been 30%, which, you know, is still a very good uh, APR. But uh, I mean, compare that to the USDC one, which was like 50 to 100%. Uh, I think that's a no brainer for me. Um, so yeah, all you need to do is click add and you'll basically pay your transaction fee. And that's pretty much it. You know, you get a you get a Uniswap um, NFT that represents your position. You can add or remove liquidity whenever you want as well. Um, and it's as simple as that. So, yeah, you really use Revert Finance. I think it's a really fantastic platform uh, to basically analyze. Uh, I will probably make a, a tweet basically talking about some of these really underrated analytics platforms as well that I think most people haven't heard about. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the main premise of Uniswap V3, how it works and how to set up a position. Of course, if you've got any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer anytime. So drop them in the comment section below. Drop me a message on Twitter if you if something I didn't answer or address properly. And of course, if you've got any questions, happy to help out anytime. So that's what I've got for you today. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'll be back with plenty more content in the near future.